So I will start rather not originally by expressing my thanks to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, and now I come to the history of the problem. L.J. Mordell stated the following theorem. The congruence AX cubed plus BY cubed plus C congruent to zero mod XY, where A, B, C are given integers, has an infinite number of solutions in, his, in which C, C, X is relatively prime to Y, and we can give X, Y as polynomials in A, B, C, and outlined a proof. He also stated the same method proves the existence of an infinity of solutions of AX to the M plus BY to the N plus C congruent to zero mod XY, where ABC are given integers, and also of FX plus GY plus C congruent to zero mod XY, where FX is equal to A naught x to the m plus a1, x to the m minus 1, plus plus a uh, with index m minus 1 times x, and g is defined similarly only with coefficients b instead of a and of degree n instead of m. And the a's and b's are integers. This is more or less repeated in Mordell's book. Uh, he only wrote only one book, and the pages are given there. Mordel was to a certain extent anticipated by Jakob Stahl, um, who assumed g equal to f and required only fx plus c congruent to zero mod y, and fy plus c congruent to zero mod x. Jakob Stahl's paper appeared in Compositio Mathematica in 1939, probably just before the war, the Second World War broke out, and was completely ignored by uh, further writers on the, sub, on the topic. And because of the war, uh, I do not find it uh, strange. However, it is strange that uh, when Mordell's paper appeared in 1952 in Acta Mathematica, uh, Jakob Stahl was still alive. And it would seem that he would claim, at least in a letter, his priority, uh, which Mordell would then uh, mention in his book. However, there is no mention of Jakob Stahl in uh, Mordell's book published in 69. Uh, so, uh, 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 we have the following on this subject. Theorem 1, the congruence AX cubed plus A1 X squared plus A2X plus BY plus C congruent to zero mod xy, where a, a1, a2, b, c are integers, has infinitely many solutions in integers if and only if the equation ax cubed plus a1 x squared plus a2 x plus b y plus c equal to zero is soluble in integers. So this contradicts in the particular in this particular case completely model statement. Uh, theorem two. Uh, if fx is ax squared plus a1x and gy is by squared plus by1, uh, by1y, uh, polynomials are with integral coefficients and c is a non-zero integer and radical c is 
dividing A1, B1, and AB is in absolute value greater than or equal to 9, then the congruence 1, congruence 1, uh, which disappeared now, uh, is the congruence <coughs> Fx plus Gy plus C congruent to 0 mod xy. And so uh, the congruence 1 has infinitely many solutions in integers x, y, such that y is relatively prime to C. If 0 is less in absolute value than a, B, and this is less in absolute value than 9, and the remaining assumptions of the theorem are satisfied, there are only finitely many exceptions. Uh, radical C means here the product of all primes dividing C, which yes, was yesterday denoted by K of N by Professor Stewart. However, since K of N is used uh, by Haas, in particular in his book for lesungen inbertzalen theory, uh, in a different meaning, meaning uh, this square free kernel of N, and K is the first letter of kernel, I prefer to, denote, to use the notation radical C. Uh, and, and Jakobstal uh, has shown that if A is B, uh, equal to B equal to 1 and A1 is equal to B1 and C is equal plus minus 1, the only exceptions are A1 equal to B1 equal to plus or minus 1. Corollary one, the congruence AX square plus BY square plus C congruent to zero mod XY, where A, B, C are non-zero integers, has infinitely many solutions in integers XY, such that Y is relatively prime to C, except for A equal to B equal to plus or minus one, and C equal to minus plus two or minus plus three. And theorem three, if F is greater or equal to four, N is equal one, and A is a non-zero integer, and A one equal to A, M minus one equal to zero, and B and C are non-zero integers, then there exist infinitely many solutions of the congruence one. This is this congruence in integers x, y, such that y, c is, uh, that y is relatively prime to c. Theorem four. Let m n be positive integers, m minus one times n minus one greater than one, f of x uh, be, equal, be a polynomial of degree m uh, without constant term, and g of y be a polynomial of degree n, again with integral coefficients at no constant term, and C is a non-zero integer, radical C divides A1, and either A, B, C is in absolute value greater than one, or A is positive, B is positive, C is positive, and the remaining coefficients are non-negative, then the congruence one has infinitely many solutions in integers X, Y, such that y is relatively prime to c. Corollary two, the congruence ax to the n plus by to the n plus c congruent to zero mod xy, where a, b, c, m, n are non-zero integers, 
and n minus 1 times n minus 1 is greater than 1 has infinitely many solutions in integers x, y, such that y is relatively prime to c. Theorems 2, 4 and corollaries 1, 2 vindicate for mn greater than 3 to a certain extent Morder's claims, but only to a certain extent. Already Niven, the reviewer of Morder's paper in mathematical reviews, pointed out that certain coefficients are assumed in the proofs to be non-zero without formal hypothesis in the statement of the theorem. Exceptions mentioned in corollary one have been found by Jakob Stahl and independently, but much later by Barnes, who doesn't quote Jakob Stahl. Finally, for MN less than or equal to three, Morder's assertion is false, as shown by theorem one. Proofs of these theorems will appear in a paper of mine, which is not yet accepted for publication. Let me add a few remarks. Ramasamy and Mohanty have found all solutions in positive integers of the equation ax cubed plus by plus c equal xyz, which even in this special case does not prove our theorem one. In the case of theorem two, W. H. Mills found all integer solutions of the equation x squared plus x, y, z plus epsilon y squared plus a x plus b y plus c equal to zero, where epsilon is equal to plus or minus one. Of course, one can write this equation uh, as a congruence modulo x, y. So, uh, in, in this case, uh, the ad, there is a definite advantage in comparison to, uh, with my theorem because he found all, sol all integer solutions and I only assert that there exist infinitely many integer solutions. And now I am going to outline the proof of theorem four. This is the theorem where the exponents can be arbitrarily large. Uh, the degrees of the polynomials can be a, a, arbitrarily large. So notation, let dk be m for k even and n for k odd, and uh, recurring sequences lambda and mu and nu satisfy the same recurrence equation lambda k equal dk lambda k minus one minus lambda k minus two, and the same for me and nu. However, the, the three sequences differ uh, in the beginning. And pi uh, zero and pi one are c. Uh, th this is a big, this at least it is to mean a big letter, big uh, Greek letter pi. Uh, pi zero and pi one is C and pi k is A to lambda k, B to, uh, to the power mi k and C to the power mi k for k uh, greater than or equal to two. And uh, th this is... Uh, rather important, G, G, GYX is just GX plus C, but F2 of X is X to the M plus one over C, F of C divided by X times X to the M. So this is indeed a polynomial because F is of degree M, uh, so uh, also X is in the denominator uh, it cancels with this x to the m, so f2x is a polynomial, and g sigma plus one is defined recursively, and f sigma plus one is defined recursively as polynomials. <coughs> Uh, 
and we have corollary three. Pi two is a pi one to the m divided by pi uh, naught, and pi three is b times pi two to the n divided by pi one, and pi k is pi k minus one to the power dk divided by pi with the index k minus two for k greater or equal four. And lemma one is that for sigma greater or equal one, f sigma and g sigma harmonic integral polynomials and f sigma of zero is pi with index two sigma minus two and g sigma of zero is pi with index two sigma minus one. And lemma two, let alpha and beta be conjugate quadratic integers, which you see there on the screen uh, uh, written. If f m, if if the product m n is different from four, uh, and if it is equal to four, then they are uh, not uh, conjugate irrational numbers, but just ratio, identical rational numbers. Uh, we have the following explicit formula for uh, lambda and mi and ni, and which are rather complicated, and I will not read them aloud. And if mn is equal to 4, uh, the formula are much simpler. However, uh, this is only shown for completeness because uh, in the case uh, of theorem four, uh, the product mn is always greater than four, so this is uh, not needed. Lemma three, if m minus one times n minus one is greater than one, and absolute value, um, and a, b is in absolute value greater than or equal to two, then uh, the limit for rho tending to infinity of a complicated difference, which you see is infinity, and also of another complicated difference also is infinity. Lemma four, if m minus one times n minus one is greater than one, then the lengths uh, of, the pol of the polynomial which you see there, uh, this is f sigma minus the leading term minus the constant term. So there are uh, only uh, the uh, middle terms. The length of this is less than or equal to uh, length of f multiplied by the f fraction which you see on the screen. And a similar result for g, g sigma, only that now uh, the exponent should be n minus 1 rather than m minus 1. And I only noticed this after. Uh, the uh, transparencies were prepared. Uh, for, for m minus one times n minus one greater than one and the product of ABC is an absolute value greater than one, and for sufficiently large rho, uh, sufficiently large meaning in terms of MN, and for uh, c sigma anywhere between two and rho implies uh, that the absolute value of this difference uh, is less th uh, than the right-hand side, and also 
the absolute value of the difference of g sigma minus the leading term minus the constant term is less than this, what you see on the screen. Lemma six, the numbers C1 uh, uh, being logarithm three divided by logarithm two C2 being logarithm seven divided by logarithm two C3 being zero and three C4 being logarithm 23 over 12 divided by logarithm two for every D greater than or equal to two satisfy the inequalities. Uh, th th this is of no interest in itself, but is used uh, in the proof, uh, I think, of lemma seven. Yes, of lemma seven. Uh, if m minus one times m minus one is greater than one and IBC is in absolute value greater than or equal to two, and rho is large enough in terms of mn, and for sigma greater than or equal to two, less than or equal rho plus one, uh, x sigma and y sigma minus one are given using back, backward induction by the formula x rho plus one is one, y rho is f of rho plus, uh, with index rho plus one of one, and x sigma is g sigma of y sigma divided by x sigma plus one, and y sigma minus one is f sigma of x, x sigma divided by y sigma. Then for every non-negative integer tau less than rho, the following inequalities hold. If lemma eight, if m minus one times n minus one is positive, uh, perhaps it should be greater than one. Uh, a is positive, a, b, c are positive, and the remaining coefficients are no, non-negative. Then for sigma greater than or equal to two and less than or equal to rho plus one, x sigma and y sigma minus one, uh, are given by formula 1415. This formula disappeared, but <laughs> important thing ever. Uh, x rho plus one is one, y rho is f rho plus one of one, uh, x uh, sigma is g sigma of y sigma divided by x sigma plus one and y sigma minus one is f sigma of x sigma divided by y sigma. So uh, under the assumption, the numbers x sigma y sigma minus one given for uh, by f f f formula of lemma seven are non-zero. Uh, well, uh, from lemma uh, uh, seven and eight, this is clear because uh, they, they, are, they were bound uh, on both sides uh, by non-zero uh, numbers.
and this is, one may say, the main lemma that under the assumptions of theorem 4, for sigma between 2 and rho plus 1, the numbers x sigma y sigma minus 1 give, be given by the formula of lemma 7, and besides x1 be uh, g1 of y1 divided by x2, then for sigma less than or equal rho plus 1, x sigma and y sigma minus 1 are integers, and moreover, x sigma is relatively prime to pi to, uh, with index 2 sigma minus 2, and y sigma minus 1 is relatively prime to pi with the index 2 sigma minus 3. And now I shall show how these theorems imply theorem, uh, these lemmas imply uh, theorem 4, namely from the lemma we get that the, uh, for rho large enough, there exist arbitrarily large x1, x2, y1, y2, such that x1, x2 is g1 of y1, which is, which is by definition g of y1 plus c, and y1, y2 is f2 of x2, uh, which is by definition x2 to the m plus 1 over c f of c over x2, x2 to the m. And now we consider c to, uh, aha, and this is very important that y1 is relatively prime to c. And all this is contained in the lemmas. Uh, now we take the following product, f of c to m minus 1 times f x plus c, and find uh, that this is just x1 to m times f2 of, of x2, uh, which therefore is congruent to 0 mod y1. However, y1 is relatively prime to c. That means that sorry, f of x1 plus c is congruent to 0 mod y1, while g y g of y1 plus c is congruent to 0 mod x1. However, x1 and y1 are relatively prime because uh, f and g has, have no constant factor. So the, uh, uh, con uh, the uh, common divisor of y1 and x1 should divide c and c is relatively prime to y1. Therefore, uh, since, uh, because of this congruence, we have f of x1 plus g of y1 plus c congruent to 0 mod x, y, 1, y. And th this completes the proof uh, of theorem 4. Now, uh, in the audience, there is one person who heard my lecture uh, in Germany about a month ago when I spoke on the same topic. Uh, uh, so I apologize to him for listening twice to the same things. However, uh, uh, in Germany, I proved, I outlined the proof of theorem 2, and here, I outlined the proof of theorem four, so it is not exactly the same lecture. And this is the end. <laughs>